So in the second part of my talk here, I want to explore how a linking theory could be derived from children's input, since we just saw that those that derive the links from the, rep the thematic representation to the syntactic position seems to be compatible uh, with children's development of linking knowledge. So, okay, let's remind ourselves what children are actually learning about links. So when you have something like little girl blick the kitten on the stairs, you know something about the syntactic positions, that this is a subject and this is an object and this is an oblique object, and you're starting with either, say, a fixed intermediate thematic representation or a relative one, right? So you have all of this. If you have a fixed one, you have your thematic rules mapping to one of them. If you have a relative representation, they're all ordered with respect to each other. So if children have a particular intermediate representation for thematic roles, then they need to link those representations to syntactic positions. That is what we're talking about in terms of learning or deriving those links. So, okay. In the case of the fixed representation, you have these three categories, really, a proto agent, proto patient, and elsewhere, and they link to the subject and the object and the oblique object. And then the theory as a whole is this three link unit, right? It's all of these. This is what your linking theory looks like, is these three links together. If you have a relative representation, you are mapping whatever roles are present to a first and second, or you know potentially third if it's available, highest role on the basis of this hierarchy, and then linking those to subject or object or oblique object, whichever the ones are available in the syntactic one from highest to, to, lo to lowest, really. And so again, you have three set links, and then the theory is this collection of three links under the relative representation. That is what you're trying to learn. And so the linking theories that we looked at, at before, both Utah and Ruta, and the derived mapping equivalents treat these as atomic units. These are three link theories, right? You either obey it or you don't, right? If you obey any one of these, you obey it. If you disobey any one of these, you disobey it, right? It's a three link atomic unit, right? So, okay. Uh, here's what I think the acquisition task would look like for one three-link theory. Uh, first, you have to derive all three individual links from the input, and then you have to derive the three-link linking theory as a unit. So, okay, how would this work? This is a great question. Uh, here's how I think it could work, is uh, consider the first part when you're just trying to get the individual links from the input. Consider all possible links out there and see which ones are reliable enough in the input to warrant the fact that this is a link you should actually build a theory from, right? Uh, so maybe that's hopefully these three, if we're looking again at the ones we would like to emerge, given what we know about how languages work. And then you're gonna have to derive the particular three link linking theory. So you're going to construct it from the reliable links, and then you're going to see if the three link theory as a unit is reliable enough, right? So that's your basic idea. Now, what you might be wondering is, uh, seems like an awful lot of work. What if we had maybe just three one link theories? Like, what's the difference? Right? Well, the difference from an acquisition task standpoint is actually it makes your life simpler. If you really are just having three individual one-link theories, all you have to do is just derive all the individual links from the input, and you don't have to worry about binding them together. You just have as your mental representation three one-link theories. Right? There's no need to bind them together, and how would this work is you're just going to derive all three links the same way, consider all possible links, and see which ones are reliable enough in the input, and then you're done. Right? So that acquisition task is sort of a one-step acquisition task. So if you have a one three-link theory, you kind of need to have two steps where you find the individual links and then you find the, the multi-link unit. If you have three one-link theories, you really just need to sort of check out the individual theories. right? And so we don't know actually which one children use. It's talked about typically this way. It could very well be this way. So really, we're just going to investigate, is either of these possible, these acquisition tasks that we've imagined, given the kind of input that children get, can you get either one three-link theory or three one-link theories that correspond to what we think children will eventually get? And so, if you recall, there are five main parts to defining an acquisition task concretely, and that's what we're going to look at here. So in the initial state, we have a bunch of knowledge, right, already. So one is, in fact, the thematic intermediate representation, whether it's the fixed one or it's the relative one that you map in terms of how high one uh, role, event participant role, is to another, right? But you have this intermediate thematic representation. You're starting with that, right? And then you have some constraints on possible links. In particular, you have to know 
which syntactic positions are relevant, so you only consider links that go to or from relevant syntactic positions of subject and object and basically everything else, oblique objects. And you also need to uh, have a constraint that a link can go from either a role to a position, right? can go this way, this direction, or you could have an expectation about where a position, what kind of thing positions like to have from position to role. So the idea that it would go this direction, that a position has a preference for a certain type of role as opposed to a role having a, a preference for a certain type of position. And then the idea that we really are looking for one-to-one -one links. So we're not going to be considering links where, say, a role can link to either object or oblique object. It links to this one or it links to that one, we're not going to consider multi-links like this, right? So a one-to-one -one kind of mapping are the only ones we're going to consider in both ways. A syntactic position can only participate in one link at a time. So some constraints, you know, plus then whatever abilities are required to do inference. That's everything that we need in our initial state if we're talking about deriving these links. So our input's going to again come from the child's tree bank where we have samples of child directed speech from three and four and five years old and we're going to get examples like this only we'll probably have real verbs but the little girl blicked the kitten on the stairs right and the kind of information you're extracting is where those intermediate representations are appearing. What's in the subject, what's in the object, what's in the oblique object, which thematic representation corresponds. That's what you're learning from. So now let's talk about inference. So remember that the acquisition process we imagined from before hinges on a child perceiving individual links and multi-link theories as reliable enough given the input. And you know, a reasonable question is what does what does that mean, right? We want to get these things, we want them to be reliable enough. Okay, what how can we do that? So how can reliable enough be implemented? And one answer is to use the tolerance principle developed by Charles Yang. And this principle is derived from really nice, cognitively plausible considerations of knowledge storage and retrieval in real time. It incorporates how frequently individual items occur, the absolute ranking of items by frequency, and serial memory access. And so uh, what it is is this right here, which I'll go through in a moment, but it's designed for situations where there are exceptions to a potential rule. So imagine that these are instances that could or that could obey a particular rule or generalization or link in our case, right? And you're paying attention to how many follow it versus how many don't. And it pro what the tolerance principle does is provide a precise threshold for how many exceptions a potential rule can tolerate, hence tolerance, before it's no longer worthwhile to have the rule from the perspective of knowledge storage and retrieval, right? And so maybe this is too much, but this is this is okay. And that threshold is defined by this lovely set of equations here, which very happily is well approximated by this extremely simple equation of n divided by the natural log of n, where n is simply the number of items that the rule could apply to. So this entire collection of instances is n. And if you have fewer than this exceptions, then yay, the rule is worth having, or if you have more than no, the rule is not worth having. So here we can use it to evaluate both individual links and multi-link theories. And so as before, we're going to be using an ideal learner model where the learner is applying the tolerance principle to all the data available rather than deploying it with the cognitive limitations and incremental learning restrictions that real children have. Of course, that's something that can be relaxed in future studies. But here we're just trying to see, is it possible? to derive the links, these linking theories, one three link theory or three one link theories, can we get either one from realistic child input, right? So great, we have our beautiful n divided by natural log of n threshold. How do we evaluate any individual links, say from representate, thematic representation to position or from position to representation? Like how do we do this? And the answer is that if it goes from role thematic representation to position, we compare this link to the others that link from this particular thematic representation, right? So how many go to subject versus object versus oblique object? Because the other ones that aren't the link in question are exceptions to this link if we're using this as our base. You know, so which of these, in fact, we should actually look at all of them, has the necessary amount, if any, according to the child's intake? Do they have fewer than this number of exceptions, right? If so, that's a reliable link. If they have more than this number of exceptions, not a reliable link. 
right? And if it goes the other way, then we compare this link to the others that link from that position, right? So now we're looking at everything that links from subject. And the ones that don't go to the representation we're interested in, these are exceptions to the link, right? And so if there are more than this amount of them, then this is not a reliable link. If there are fewer than this amount of them, then this is the reliable link. So great. Now, how do we evaluate multi-link theories? Well, the idea is, is, is very similar, actually. So in particular, we compare the link instances that follow the multi-link theory, which is these little green guys here, which are kind of hard to see, against the link instances that don't, which are the exceptions. And we have the exceptions to be fewer than this number, right? So this is a simple binary distinction, right, between the links that follow, the links that don't. And we're just comparing, right? Does the three-link theory have fewer than this amount of exceptions, right? More the ones that follow to make it reliable enough. If so, that is a reliable multi-link theory, right? So that's our basic idea. And then the rest of the inference process really depends on the target knowledge for the model learner. If we're doing one three-link theory or three one-link theories, so I'm going to walk you through each one of those. So if we're doing one three-link theory, right, then again, the first thing we got to do is break this up into two steps. We got to derive the individual links, then we got to check that multi-link theory. So first, are the individual links reliable enough? So we're going to look at all the instances from all the verbs collectively just to see which links surface as reliable out of just all the verb tokens out there. And once you get those, if the right links are reliable, then the child can posit this as one three-link theory. And then what you want to do, once you have a theory, right, you're going to evaluate it against the verbs of the language because the whole point of a linking theory is that it helps you predict how verbs of your language behave. So therefore, you want it to be true, right, for all the verbs of the language. So now we're looking at verb types, verb lexical items, and that's what we're evaluating our theory against, right? So, okay, great. We're looking for the linking theory to hold for the verb lexical items, the types of the language. And so we want the number of verb types that disobey it to be less than our tolerance principle threshold. Lovely. How do we tell if a verb type obeys or disobeys it? Like if we're looking at hug, for example, well, what we do is look at the verb types instances, right, according to whether they follow the linking theory or not. So how many follow, how many don't, and we're looking for the exceptions to be less than the tolerance principle threshold. If so, then this verb type obeys that theory, okay? So we do this, right, we have, we find out how many obey the theory, and how many don't, like belong is one that tends to violate lots of theories, right? So if enough verb types are reliable enough, then this linking theory is reliable enough because the exceptions are below this threshold, right? That's what we're doing. But what if the target state is just three one-link theories? So again, if we're talking about theories, we're talking about this means the links, the individual links, are holding for the verb lexical items, right? That's, that's what we're trying to check. So does each, does this link work for all my verbs? Does this link work for all my verbs? Does this link work for all my verbs? That's what I'm trying to decide, because now we're talking about a theory. So we want the number of verb types that disobey, each one, to be less than our tolerance principle threshold. So then, okay, how do we tell? Well, that's exciting there. If a verb type, right, follows it, well, the same, the very same way bef as before, we evaluate that verb type's instances according to whether they follow the one link theory or not, right? So one link at a time, no glom, just one link at a time. And then we want the number of verbs, uh, instances that disobey it to be less than, than our tolerance principle threshold. If so, then we say, aha, this verb is a good verb with respect to this one link theory, right? And we can do this for all of our verbs to find out in general, are the verb types, you know, reliable enough, then this one link theory is reliable enough. And we do this for this one link theory and this one link theory, right? We do it for each of our one link theories individually, right? And that's it. So again, slightly different inference processes, but let me tell you now the results of these different ways of deriving different kinds of linking theories, the one three link theory or three one link theory. And the interesting thing, first of all, is that it seems to be true for all three ages, right? So first of all, for one three link theory, first we have to ask, are the individual links reliable enough? Can you get these individual links out? And it turns out, actually, that uh, here are the ones that are for the fixed representation where you just have three fixed categories. Uh, you have at least one in one direction for each of our three links that we want 
that's good, either from thematic representation to syntactic position or syntactic position to thematic representation, like we have at least one direction of the preference. Um, and there are no other weirdo ones out there. We didn't find any ones that shouldn't be there, so that's really good. But none of these actually have a reliable link in both directions, and it's honestly not clear if both directions are needed to posit a link for the linking theory. Maybe they aren't. But if they are, this may make it harder to actually posit the building blocks of your three-link theory. Now contrast this with the relative representation, where links in both directions are reliable enough and there are no extraneous links, so it's actually very easy to posit your necessary building blocks to make your three-link theory. Okay, but let's say, if we go back to our fixed representation, that one unidirectional link is enough, we get our link between our thematic representation and the syntactic position, we have our building blocks, we've made our glom, of three links, great, now we need to evaluate it. So it turns out, whoops, <laughs> this three link theory isn't reliable enough because not enough verb types obey it. But the three link theory with the relative representation is very easy to form, right, because we have our bi-directional links, and it turns out it's perfectly reliable given children's input. So our relative representation makes deriving a three link theory of the kind that linguists have theorized much simpler, so it's really ruta. Uh, that seems to have the sort of the adult target state that we're looking for using the relative representation. That's easy. Does anything change if children only have to derive three one link theories? You're not talking about it as a, an atomic glom, an atomic unit. You're saying, can I get the individual links to work out? And it turns out, you know, again, if we're just looking at this sort of one step process, you know, are the individual links reliable enough for the verb types of my language? We really end up with a very similar story. The same three unidirectional links as before are reliable enough for the fixed thematic representation. And so it may be harder to actually form your one link theories from that, right? If you don't have both directions, we don't know, right? But certainly not as easy as our delightful relative representation where you have uh, bi-directional links, unidirectional in both directions, no extraneous links, so super easy to form your theories. So relying on a relative thematic representation seems to be the only way to easily derive three one link theories of the kind compatible with those that linguists have theorized, in particular again, Ruta, the relativized representation, it may be possible to do with Utah, but it's definitely not as easy because you only have them going in one direction. So the bigger takeaway I think from this is that we have developmental support for Ruta, the relativized representation, over Utah. Whether we think the linking theories that human use, humans use are multi-link theories, like these guys here, or multiple one-link theories, it, it seems that English children would need to rely on a relative thematic representation if they're going to derive these linking theories from their input.